In this lesson on grade 12 Euclidean geometry, we are going to have a look at the similarity theorem. If two figures are similar, it indicates two things. Firstly, it indicates that the corresponding angles of the two figures are the same size. And it also indicates that the corresponding sides are in the same proportion. The one figure is then simply an enlargement of the other one. Both of these properties should be true for you to be able to say that two figures are similar. A triangle, however, is the exception, and that is what we are going to have a look at in our next theorem, the similarity theorem. Theorem 2, the similarity theorem. If two triangles are equiangular, then their corresponding sides are in the same proportion, and hence the triangles are similar. So equiangular triangles means that we know that angle A is equal to angle D, angle B is equal to angle E, and we know that angle C is equal to angle F. And this theorem says that if we know that these corresponding angles are the same size, we can immediately accept that the sides will also be in the same proportion and that these two triangles are then similar. Just a reminder that in grade 9 you were taught that the symbol for similarity is the three vertical lines. So for triangles, if you know one of the two properties for similarity, you can accept the other one and that the triangles are then similar. Your reason for this theorem is simply angle, angle, angle. You will see that your grade 11 geometry becomes part of the questions more and more. So if you can't remember your grade 11 geometry, first go and watch the grade 11 videos and then come back to these. In this sketch, SR is a tangent to circle PST, the biggest circle, at S. We need to prove that triangle PRS is similar to triangle SRT. And for this, we're going to have five lines that we need to write down. You always start by writing down in which two triangles you are working. So I am in triangle PRS and triangle SRT. And now I need to write down three corresponding angles that are equal in these two triangles. So for that, I'm going to start off by saying that I can see that angle R1 is a common angle, so it's the same size in both triangles. So R1 is equal to R1. And my reason for this, it's a common angle. And if we then focus on R is our tangent again, from that tangent we can also form from point S chord ST, and the angle between a tangent and a chord is the same size as the angle formed from that chord in the opposite circle segment, so angle P. So we can say that angle P is the same size as angle S2, and my reason for this is tangent chord theorem. And once you have two pairs of common angles that you have proven are the same, the third pair of angles you can accept are the same, because in both triangles, the interior angles still have to add up to 180 degrees. So in my blue triangle, I'm left with angle S1 and 2, and that will then be the same as angle T2 in my green triangle. My reason for that, interior angles of a triangle. And now I have my three pairs of corresponding angles that are the same. And our similarity theorem says that for a triangle, if we know the corresponding angles are the same, we can accept that the corresponding sides are in the same proportion. 
and that means I can now say that these two triangles are similar. Now when you write down the similarity, the order of the letters are very important. So I would suggest writing it down just like you paired them up just now. So I'm going to start with RPS and that will be similar to the letters on the other side which will be RST and my reason for that is angle, angle, angle. Now that we know these two triangles are similar, we can also, as I mentioned, accept that all the corresponding sides are in the same proportion. To identify these corresponding sides can sometimes get a bit tricky if you look at the picture, but because we made sure that our letters in our two triangles correspond, we can use that. So we can say that the first two letters in the first triangle form a ratio with the first two letters in the second triangle. So RP and RS will have a ratio that is the same as the first and last letters in both triangles. So RS and RT which will have the same ratio as the last two letters in both triangles, which will be PS and ST. So if your order of your letters when you write down your similarity is correct, you can immediately write down the pairs of sides that correspond. So from here, there are quite a few questions they can now ask us. The first thing they can ask us after our similarity is a straightforward proportion. So we can immediately say that from question A, we can write down that proportion. But then the important thing is to remember you need to give a reason why you can write down the proportion. And that will be our similar triangles that we've proven in question A. Then they can also ask us something like this, where we now have sides that have been multiplied. And you just need to realize that it it was the ratios that we just wrote down that was now cross multiplied to get that answer. So I'm going to start off writing the ratio that I got from my similarity again. And I've already supplied the reason in B. And now I simply need to cross multiply to get RS squared is equal to R t multiplied with rp. So they will usually start off asking you to prove triangles similar and then ask you from there to form either ratios or products. 